Hello everyone. Today I am going to explain the poem titled Dead Fugue written by Paul Celan. Paul Celan was born to a German speaking Jewish family. His mother Fritzi was an avid reader of the German literature and insisted that German be the language of the house. He learned Hebrew from his father Leo Anschul who was a Zionist. Both Selen's parents were victims of the Holocaust. The Holocaust is one of the most depressing events in world history. Also known as Shoah, it refers to the genocide of European Jews. Nearly 6 million European Jews were systematically murdered by Nazi Germany and its collaborators between 1941 and 1945. Both his parents were deported to Nazi concentration camps and died there. His father died of typhus while in the camp and his mother was shot dead after being unable to work. Even Paul Celan was subjected to forced labor in one of the concentration camps before he escaped to the Red Army. Though he survived the Holocaust and came out alive, he suffered from depression for a long time and committed suicide by drowning in the River Seine in 1970. Death Fugue is one of the most anthologized of Celan's poetry. A fugue is a piece of music that starts off with some kind of a theme and returns to that theme several times. Death fugue means the fugue of death or the music of death. The poem encapsulates the pain, sorrow and horror experienced by Jewish inmates in concentration camps. The poem begins with the haunting refrain, Black milk of daybreak, we drink it at nightfall. We drink it at noon, in the morning. We drink it at night, we drink it and drink it. The speakers of the poem are an unidentified we, who are presumably all the Jewish victims of the Holocaust. Salan uses run-on sentences without proper punctuation marks to reflect on the deteriorating consciousness of the speakers of the poem. Milk is generally considered as a symbol of nourishment. Black milk is a metaphor which stands for the unnourished lives of the prisoners in the camps. It symbolizes the toxicity that prevails in the camps. From daybreak to the nightfall, the prisoners are subjected to different kinds of horrendous treatments in the camps. A Nazi SS guard is in charge of all the prisoners. The central image of the poem depicts the Jewish prisoners being forced to dig out their own graves while being told that they will rise up as smoke in the air. The SS guard who is in charge of these prisoners is a very cruel man who takes pleasure in torturing the Jews by all possible means. The guard orders them to dig deeper and play music as they do so. He wants them to dance and play music, sweeter music, at a site where they are condemned to labor it. He sets out his dogs upon the prisoners, swings his iron belt, and plays with snakes in order to terrorize the helpless prisoners. Snakes are representative of sin and venom. According to Bible, Satan had come disguised as a snake to cause the fall of man by tempting Eve to consume the forbidden fruit. The SS God's affinity for snakes thus throws light on the sinister side of his personality. Ironically, this Nazi SS guard, who is a very cruel man, is also a lover of art and nature. He loves to play music and revels in the beauty of the starlit night sky outside the camp. He is also a romantic at heart and writes letters to his beloved who resides in Germany.
he considers his beloved on par with the golden hair margaret the golden hair margaret is forced heroine in his world renowned classic forced margaret's golden hair is indicative of her german ancestry margaret is considered as an ideal of german womanhood the irony lies in the fact that culture is typically understood as a civilizing force on humanity but culture here seems to be complicit in the atrocities being carried out against the jews the germany of the god's imagination full of loving and compassionate margarets in fact motivates him to carry out atrocities against the jews the god's excessive love and pride for the german art and culture motivates him to eradicate anything and everything that he views as inferior to his own noble german culture thus he has no qualms in inflicting pain on the jews who in his eyes belong to an inferior race and culture so then contrast the image of the golden haired margaret to that of the ashen haired shulamit shulamit is a princess who figures in the important hebrew text song of songs shulamit is a knight of jewish womanhood just as margaret is that of german womanhood shulamit's ashen hair indicates her jewish ancestry it's also symbolic of the genocide of the jews for the color of her hair is also the color of the smoke that comes out of the gas chambers where jews are gassed to death while margarets and shulamits can coexist in the german society the former is destined to bask in all glory while the latter is condemned to die by virtue of her ashen hair that is by virtue of her jewish ancestry the speakers of the poem says that death comes as a master from germany with blue eyes blue eyes are indicative of the aryan race the god's eyes are also blue the god receives orders from his boss from germany and executes the inmates accordingly some he shoots while some he sends to the gas chambers the god tells the prisoners to dig deeper graves or they would have enough space to lie he tells them that the dead bodies will have to stay crammed together if they don't dig deeper enough he also tells them that soon they will rise up as smoke in the air and they will have ample space to lie in the sky in a time when xenophobia is on the rise this heart wrenching poem serves as a stark reminder of a cruel past that ought not to be repeated with that we come to the end of the session if you found this useful please subscribe and press the bell icon thank you